The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. From the center of that galaxy and directly in the center of our own, this is Four Center presents Other Center. I'm Ken Napsa. I'm Joseph Scrimshaw. And I'm Jennifer Landa. And we are about to dive into a wonderful topic. Oh, the good, the bad, the exercise. Joseph's going to lead us through this conversation about working out, uh, hiking, walking, running, and uh, the good, the bad of all of that there. Can't wait to get to this one. Before we do, we always like to remind you that today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash Force Center. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. A little bit later, we'll have a Force Center Recommends, an audiobook we think you should try out on us, and it does absolutely help the show. So if you're looking ways to support us during these times, uh, there's a lot of ways to uh, do that, including, you know, just listening and telling your friends, but also going to audibletrial.com slash four center uh keep it in that spirit there uh we are going to do our ask segment and joseph change up low and away uh <laughs> swinging and missing you would have struck me out this is a great wonderful change yeah we've been talking about uh patreon a lot and we really appreciate uh everybody's support over there but uh we started this whole ask segment so we could rotate to different things and different needs and one of the things that's uh, become clear is that, you know, other center is going pretty well. And, and I think it's kind of time to pass the corner from from fear uh, to hope and excitement. And that this is uh, an opportunity to grow listeners uh, who might be interested in the kind of life topics we're talking about. So one of the things that we realized would, would help with that is uh, some fresh reviews on uh, Apple. Mm-hmm. on music uh, it, i think the, uh, the app is just called music now right or no podcast it's just a now yeah yeah but oh. it used to be itunes and now it's just called music you know so oh, leave a review yeah. on music uh, <laughs> or podcast <laughs> podcast uh so confused anyway uh leave a review on that wonderfully branded app podcast um mm-hmm. and uh about other center in particular um, it, it, especially if you've been around for a while and you know the difference between and the similarities between us talking about Star Wars, us talking about life. I think um, people seeing fresh reviews about what the podcast is doing right now would help a lot. I think in that same vein, if you have friends who are uh, not into that galaxy far, far away or only very lightly into that galaxy far, far away, they the kind of people who would tune in and go, what the hell are they talking about? Uh, this might be a good time to recommend uh, the podcast to those kinds of friends who aren't as deep into Star Wars and see if maybe we can reach some new people. Uh, that is uh, my thought. Ken, Jennifer, any any follow up to that? I, no. Yeah, no, that's a wonderful idea. It's been fun to see um, some people um, uh, talking about what you're what you're explaining. Like I've gotten behind on Star Wars or, you know, I, I kind of had to. T- tapped out a little bit and, and and music brought me back. Nostalgia conversation brought me back. Or uh, some people saying, you know, uh, my partner uh, I is not a huge fan of that a fantasy space saga you talk about, but she der- sure does love music and, and it's been fun to see that uh, that happen. So this will be a great yeah. way to do that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, awesome. give us a review on the on the app that I can't remember the name of and tell your friends. Uh, however, <laughs> however you talk to your friends these days. It's definitely give them, Apple. Give them a recommendation. Definitely Apple Podcast because I just brought it up on my phone and now every podcast is downloading on my phone right now. That I <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, there you go. Also, we want to plug that uh, we had a great time doing questions of the other variety live for y'all, uh, hanging out with you uh, this past Friday. Jennifer joined us for uh, ninety solid minutes of the show, Jen. We were so happy and blessed to have you there. And uh, we announced there that we reached a Patreon goal. And we'll be doing a special live life ranked episode exclusive to patrons, then released to the public later. And it's going to be about desserts. Jen, I know you've been researching this and you're ready to go for this. <laughs> I've spent a lot of thought. Uh, I was looking at pictures of desserts to get inspiration, and I feel confident about my list. <laughs> oh, this is this is so great! I've been loving ranking with Jennifer because mm-hmm. wild card. Don't know, don't know what's going to come up. <laughs> the other center journey. 
uh, should be subtitled uh, the uh, the Landa revelations. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Landa gets weird. That's what <laughs> from from discovering you're a Grateful Deadhead fan, a Grateful Dead <laughs> fan, and a Deadhead, to uh, discovering that you also fought Nazis at par- propaganda shows. Uh, the Discord has been a buzz with the Landa oh. revelations. Oh my gosh. Afterwards, I was like, I think I've shared too much. Find out the best ice cream to go with uh, <laughs> punching down Nazis at punk shows. <laughs> oh, we're about to dive into our main topic. We do like to catch up. Uh, you know, life uh, life still happens, regardless of uh, whether or not uh, you're talking about space sagas. So, Jen, uh, did you go any punk shows this weekend? No, I did not. I don't even know what I did. I think when we last chatted on Friday, I had just come from the uh, the strike at the mm. Warner Brothers Studios in Burbank. Mm. It was so hot. Um, <laughs> but I went there for a Latinas Acting Up meetup, which was so, it felt fantastic. I saw some of my heroes, Gina mm. Torres, uh, Constance Marie, Luis Guzman. I, it was, and I met new people. I met old friends, new. It was wonderful. And it was really the kind of um, lifting of the spirits that I needed because I'm like, this thing is going on for forever. The studios are yeah. are doing kind of not smart things, leaking stuff to the press. And it's just, it's nice to be around your people, right? The community and um, to lift each other up. So that was, that was wonderful. That was on Friday. That's great. No, yeah. Feel that energy. Feel the energy. Yes. Mm. Good stuff. Uh, my, my life was uh, relatively simple, busy, but uh, uh, you ever have those days where you're like, I have a list of five things to do and you get up and you're like, nah, nah, we're not, <laughs> we're not doing that. We're not doing yes. that. So that was, that was most of my weekend. Uh, able to get some stuff done, but uh, also uh, got to, um, go to a, a, a comedy club I'd never been to before, but it's historic, uh, the the comedy magic club in Hermosa Beach. My whole life just never performed there, never got, went there, but I accompanied our, our buddy Mark Ellis there and hung out and got to meet some some older comics that are uh, one I used to watch and was kind of one of the reasons uh, I started doing comedy. Uh, so that was fun wow. to kind of hang out and, and just kind of feel the vibe uh, of that and not have to worry about performing. And then um, we went to a... Uh, uh, a uh, I don't even know the name of the camera. Can't even, can't even give them free advertising. It just uh, is like at a Chicago beef <laughs> restaurant. Like just, you know, <laughs> go for the beef at a French dip sandwich that made me see God. It was wonderful. So uh, the, the lesson of all of this is uh, even though I try to remain vegan, um, just, uh, you know, sometimes just got to kick your heels up and enjoy the slow little things of life. And that was my big lesson. I think that was a very good lesson. And I like this uh, sort of travelogue cooking show that we could Mm. do where we can't remember where we went or what the name of it is. So it's also like a mystery investigation. (laughs) Go somewhere in this general area and then find beef that will make you see God. That's the mission. There you go. (laughs) Right. It was two doors down for the comedy club. I can't. Ellis was like, you got to come on. We have a place in La Jolla we go to. Uh, we, 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 I think it's Chicago fire for a girl. Something, but we know the, the owner is a guy named George and he's both awesome and scary. And, uh, yeah. um, it, yeah, so it's become a thing with us. Anyways, I'll, I'll get the name and I'll let you, I'll update you on a special life ranked. Yeah. Well, I, like I, I, I love it. That is great. Yeah. We can have a, a mystery beef ranked. Mm, <laughs> really? Interesting. Uh, I love this is a, a Hardy boys, Nancy Drew sort of mm-hmm. thing of the mystery of the beef. Where is it? Where did he go? Uh, <laughs> I think uh, I think my life adventures are, are a little similar in vibe to uh, mm-hmm. to both of you, and that it's it is just a weird time for lots of reasons. So trying to find that balance of you know I've been traveling a lot, a lot of big projects, and I have this long list of stuff that I really really need to get to and really really want to get to, but I keep getting distracted by shiny things. Uh, I keep mm-hmm. uh, going back and forth between like look at oh i just focused and i accomplished something and oh now i drifted right. off into outer space uh mm-hmm. and I, I had one of those the other day where like it's like i you know what you know screw it all i'm just gonna start my day by by reading and i read for two hours like that was indulgent wow. like great and like now i'm gonna really get things done and uh uh i had a box that i had taped shut i think two months ago of uh, some gifts uh, to send to our friend Ken Plume. <laughs> and I had not walked to the damn post office uh, in Hollywood, which is a 
pleasant walk and just like, you know what? I'm getting that done. I'll get exercise. Uh, and I, and I walked to the post office and I was like, Oh no, the post office is dangerously close to three record stores. <laughs> oh. And I got, I got the post office done, but then I, I got trapped by the record stores and there went the rest of my day. <laughs> I heard about this package though. I heard about it. <laughs> it was a good package. There's some good stuff in it. Uh, very kind. Uh, Ken Ken is uh, is very kind, very helpful. It did did some great help for me on the on the short film. So I wanted to uh, return the favor, and uh, I finally got that done. So that that was great. Uh, I also uh, posted on social media that I finally had the right calm evening uh, to show my wife the the short film that I've been working on with so many people, the one that Ken's in. Uh, and and she gave it a good review, a glowing review, including Ken's performance. So that was a that was really really nice. It was really I'll nice to finally find the right time to do it. I'll t- hey. I got one, one, one good review so far. <laughs> <One> good review. <laughs> oh boy, put them on the score. One out of one, uh, because that's the only <laughs> review it's had. I guess uh, that's beautiful. Great. Yeah. Excited for yeah. that. Better for that. Uh, well, without further ado, we've caught up on life. We've plugged. We've asked. We've uh, recommended. Well, gotten ready for a recommendation. We're going to dive into uh, the uh, main topic today. Joseph, take it away. Take it away. We're going to be talking extras. Yeah. So I, I, I made a big list uh, on some airplane ride of like stuff early on in other center we could we could talk about, and this was one of them. And then when I got to it, I was like, wow. Uh, I think of exercise a certain way, uh, but I realized uh, I was thinking it, and then both of you reflected it to me uh, when when I said, "Hey, how mm-hmm. about exercise for for this week's uh, deep dive?" That a, a conversation about exercise can be a lot of things. It can be you know fun and jokey about the universal challenge of of trying to keep up with it, uh, but also talking about exercise immediately tips into deadly serious topics about body <laughs> shaming and health risks and all sorts of stuff. So I think we'll probably be em- embracing both because you both responded with like, yeah, I got some, I got some uh, fun thoughts and some deep thoughts. <laughs> so, so I want to just start with getting a sense of where you're both at when you think of exercise and talking about it, uh, how much of the topic is fun and cathartic and how much of the topic is heavy and even potentially upsetting? Jennifer, where do you go with it? You know, for me personally, it's a, it's a slippery slope. So I, I like exercising, but I don't ever like to feel shamed or guilted into doing it, mm. which ever since I was a kid, it kind of felt like that was put upon me, whether it was from society or from school, right? Um, and what I've learned is that exercise is such a personal thing and what works for one person may not work for someone else. Mm-hmm. And really being mindful of that when we talk about exercise um, with friends or family, um, and it can be really upsetting to someone if you're like, oh, you just need to prioritize working out and then you'll have a six pack and you'll have you know, a healthy mm-hmm. life. It's like, mm, no, that's not necessarily true, especially when it comes from celebrities who have mm-hmm. personal trainers mm-hmm. and personal chefs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, so for you as a topic, is it, when you think about talking about it, is it like, Ooh, I need to navigate that carefully or is it more, you just need to be honest about it from your perspective and own it as your perspective to, to respect that it's an individual journey. Both. And when we first got this topic, I was like, oh, this is going to be this is going to be funny. I was like, because I am the last person who should be talking about exercise. Uh, And then I was like, oh, guy, actually, this is really kind of upsetting, (laughs) not upsetting, but just like it's just it feels charged, you know? Yeah. Um, Yeah. So, yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Ken, is it similar for you? A a mixed bag? I I would describe it as as currently mostly positive, but it starts from. And continues to be part of like that that kind of stuff. Jen's talking, and and, and to be clear, the, the pressure on, on on me as as a male is definitely uh, different than the pressure on, uh, pressure on, on on a woman in this industry in particular, but also just in society. Uh, we'll be clear about that. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's definitely can be. It can go into the dark side of it all, and 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 the drive to uh, reach some standards. Um, I love that you point out some of the and, and i i think people are aware of it now but i think we all fall for it of just like yeah now you know you look at this this you know insert celebrity name of wow what great shape and they got a routine and 
They, they got this. That's their job. They have to that day and they, they have to work out for six hours and they have this chef. Some of them yeah, you might get a little help from some sort of uh, uh, special supplement. You know, like it's just mm-hmm. you, you, you got to put it in perspective and, and it is personal and it is what what um, what works for you doesn't work for others and vice versa. That's actually one of my one of my little pet peeves is when someone Oh, you got to do this. No, I don't like that. <laughs> That's not what I do. That's not how I work out. It's now I like, you know, I'm all for trying new things. But yeah, so it goes a lot of places. I was excited to talk about this because it's it's a big part of my life in a good and bad way. So yeah, that's why we're here. Yeah, I think I think it is a part of people's lives in in good and bad ways. And I think that's, to me, why I I think when I first brought it up, it's like, this will be fun. We can, we can joke about, you know, the ups and downs of it mm-hmm. and then stopping and thinking like, but it, it gets into these other issues and I want to be really respectful of that. And it made me think about just how much, um, that, uh, for me joking, if I'm joking about something, it often means that I take it deadly serious <laughs> right. and that's why I'm joking about it to grapple with it or acknowledge it. Like, I, like you're both saying, I have my own personal journey with exercise, what, what's worked for me, what hasn't, how I feel about it, the good, the bad, all that stuff. Um, But I think there's something relatively universal about exercise, which is the, the thing to me that, that becomes funny about it is um, I'm speaking in some generalizations here, but like most of us want to do it or or need to do it if it's entirely not cosmetic, just health-based. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But also we all agree, like we need to do this, Often we even feel better after we do it, and yet we still hate it. And <laughs> the 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 comp to me the 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 greatest comedy. And you can have fun with the uh, wordplay or just you know, sort of silly jokes or you know really nasty cutting stuff that's you know taking something down. But to me, like the best comedy is wrestling with why are we made this way? You know, to just this weird condition of we need to get just a basic amount of exercise to, to be healthy. And yet we, <laughs> we often despise it. I know there's some people who love exercise. They live for it. They're great. And you're like, what are you talking about? But certainly there's enough of us that hate something that's vital to our own survival. And that to me is deadly serious, but also <laughs> funny. Like you, you got to kind of find a way to laugh at it uh, to, <laughs> in order to be able to, to wrestle with the weirdness that we're made this way. Yeah. It's, it's like so many, yeah, I don't know, like writing, like I'm one of those writers who absolutely despises writing, like get out of here. It's still my least favorite thing, but <laughs> until I'm done with it. Yeah. And, 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 and exercise is fine. I mean, hey, look, I'll, I'll jump in, around a little bit, but I'm recording in exercise gear. I have it on right now. <laughs> I always do because usually what happens is after we record, I edit some episodes, get them uploaded, have a snack, and then I work out. And if I don't have the gear on, uh, uh, I, I don't <laughs> force, yeah. force center ends. I eat a snack and I'm like, great Fortnite. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm in sweat mm-hmm. man. Or right. like that stuff. Yeah. No. And we'll talk about it, but I think, you know, uh, people, people relate to it. I've been on and off doing these, uh, these social media posts uh, that are like exercise updates and they started over a decade ago, uh, joking about my own process of like, I always have that thing of like, uh, well, I just need this one thing and then I'll start to exercise. And one of it was like buying sweatpants. And I think like the first exercise update I did is like, well, here's my exercise update. I actually bought sweatpants. And <laughs> now I'll be able to exercise. And uh, those have always got a good response. And that to me has made me feel like, yeah, the, these are these these things that so many of us wrestle with. Mm-hmm. Um, just to get uh, get it out of the way at the top, we can address it more if we want. But um, for myself, along with the joking, I think I want to be honest and acknowledge that a ton of my relationship throughout my life about exercise has been about, uh, uh, about body shame. Um, mm. but, uh, certainly there's an element of exercise that is just, you need to stay active. You need to stay healthy. I think that's largely where I'm at. But when I started thinking about some of my, my personal history, uh, a lot of it is about, I need to change my body to be, attractive and desired and, and validated. Um, we'll, we can uh, get into that more as we go, uh, but feel free to go wherever you want in terms of <laughs> the joking or the serious. 
let's talk about personal history. Uh, Ken, when did you first start exercising? How old were you? How did it go? Why did you start? I'm try- this is a great, great question, Joseph. I don't remember the exact answer. I Move played, on to Jennifer, then. yeah, I played youth <laughs> soccer for two years. wasn't very good. One at one point, my coach came screaming at me and said, "Do you do you enjoy the tickets to the game you have? Because you're just watching it." Um, I I just I didn't love uh, <laughs> soccer. Uh, also, because I had a real jerk of a coach, quite frankly, um, which led me to baseball. And then I didn't get to play it as much as I wanted. Uh, there's some ec- maybe some economic reasons my parents didn't put me in. And and uh, I had to watch from the silence. Finally got to play. I was OK. I, I wanted to be better. Um, and and so during that time, so I was I was but I wasn't exercising. Right. So I was I was running the laps and doing all the things the coaches have you do. And then and but I just uh, I didn't gear it you know didn't really focus on exercising for myself till after high school um and then it kind of stuck in but i wanted to i was afraid i didn't really know my dad was a weightlifter my dad mm. in, in the navy um um it, it's kind of thing where you know we, we you see the pictures and you're like damn dad good stuff <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? um and i am built like him i am a cart puller as i say uh, so I don't do a lot of running. I break my ankles if I run too long. Uh, uh, I am short and squat. I know recently someone measured out at 6'3", 215 pounds. That's a lie because I'm 5'10", 220, 225. <laughs> oh. A lot of people, a lot of people <laughs> surprise that number, but I, 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 I wear it relatively well because uh, I'm, I'm bulky. Like I said, I'm a cart puller. But I've always battled that. But, but actually, take it back. I was actually really, really thin. I actually graduated high school so thin like my my grandmother who, uh, this is dark humor, eventually passed away of cancer, used to always tease me, you look like you have cancer, you need to eat. Like every time I'd say, mm. you're too skinny, you're too skinny, you're too skinny. I, I was this beanpole of a kid. Uh, so I took that to heart and and went the other way. <laughs> and then, you know, formed into my, my dad's frame. But um, anyways, it was around that time where I felt I had to, right? Because uh, I, I, I grew up, old, our generation, remember, you probably had them too, uh, Joseph and Jennifer, if you read comics in the 80s too, of like, remember in the back of the comics, you had that ad, it was an old ad, it was like the Joe Weider ads, if you're on the beach with your girl and a guy comes up and kicks sand on you, you better defend yourself, you better work out or else she's going to leave you for him, right? Like th- those ads were in every issue of every comic I own. Uh, yeah. so- no, that is that that ad is the one of the reasons uh, that I exercise. <laughs> wow. right? and I, 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 it's I, a I, defining life image. Yes, yes. You you and I are picturing the same thing right now, and that was uh, you know uh, for better or worse, I'll say nicely, it was was ingrained in my head as as yeah. I first I got called too skinny, and then uh, later on getting a little too heavy. Yeah. There we go. Dark. So did you um <laughs> when you so you had that that psychological thing that that we've talked about and we'll talk about more. We we've talked about it in in context of um you know a lot of the characters of the 80s were big and muscle bound so it was great to see some that weren't. Yeah. Um but you're talking also about about sports. When you first started exercising for you was it I need to change the way I look so I can be the sand kicker not the sand kicky or mm. was it <laughs> I need to be in good shape because I want to be a sports player. It, it was a combination of that. Members, uh, you know, I was a big pro wrestling fan. Eventually, we'll get into pro wrestling. Um, I wanted to be a wrestler. I ended up being a manager and, and like a, a booker and promoter type uh, because I don't. I just don't have the coordination to be an athlete. I learned that hard <laughs> in the hard way. Try not for my baseball team. That's right. <laughs> but it was, it was a little bit of that, which I, again, I don't. I don't think is completely negative, and that's part of it, and that's part of the fun. Um, but uh, without a doubt, it, it 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 it's a little bit of the I was the shy nerdy kid, and and you know who, who again, um, you know, had dealt with some of that uh, stuff. So that's always been the battle to to where now uh, I still have that, um, and and I have to work through it. But but I also enjoy it, right? So I did discover I enjoyed it. Um, mm. so it, was, it was a weird combination. Yeah. So what kind of and what what were you doing then for exercise? Eventually, I I cannot. I cannot run. It's painful to watch me run. Uh, and everyone will come in and give, well, here's the form. And nuts to that. I, I cannot run with any speed or skill. Uh, my, my old friend, uh, my old roommate said, watching you run is like watching a hippopotamus stamp out a fire. 
on a sidewalk. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's real bad. And it's, and that is true. Um, so, uh, I, I actually had a six, actually I had a six minute mile in high school and then by mm. ninth in ninth grade and by 12, 12th grade, that was about a 16 minute mile. <laughs> it's just, it's just, <laughs> uh, and even when I used to have to run the old security days run to like a fight. I, by the time I got to the fight, my ankles were burning with shin splints. Like I had to eventually, I had to get promoted just so I could point and say, you all go, I'll get there. Like it was bad. Okay. So, yeah. So not running. Not uh, running not did did running. you, like when you were a kid then, when you were, when you were still uh, uh, skinny, uh, uh, did you, did you, Weight lift? Wait, wait, weights. Yeah, it's always in weights. Okay. And I love, I love, and, and, and jump to the, the good stuff. I love weightlifting. It's meditative for me. I do not like uh, meditation. I, I've tried various different things of yoga. Um, I cannot. I just, two, two seconds in, I'm thinking about every aspect of life in a distracting way. Whereas mm. I can, mm. wait, I can weight lift and work on stand up bits. I can just uh, work on song lyrics or I can just be. And, and, and focus and it clears me. And, and so I discovered that I love that. So my dad being an, an uh, old, old, older weightlifter, um, had some of his like weights that I would use. And I moved to LA with him and they're old, they're gone. They're like, they were like, they were filled with sand that had become like concrete level hard. <laughs> and, like, wow. They started cracking, but I, I would work out with that. Um, he didn't really teach me how to do it. Um, but I just, I had them and that was kind of in my room working out. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Uh, some of my journey overlaps with with uh, with, with Ken's, but I want to jump to you, Jennifer, of uh, your the beginning of your exercise uh, history, when you started, and how old were you, and and what you did, and why. You know, back in the eighties, I feel like exercise was such a big part of the American culture. You mm -hmm. know, it was like Weight Watchers and Jenny Craig, and then Jane Fonda and Richard Simmons, mm -hmm. and it was like jazzercise and aerobics, <laughs> right? Which kind of came from the seventies as well. Right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's Olivia Newton-John. That's right. Um, so I remember actually, body talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I remember being really little and going to the gym with my mom while she did her aerobics class. And so <laughs> having a really positive association yeah. and then Good. later on when she was like, you know, when Weight Watchers and Jenny Craig and seeing how it could be this like neg like negative mm -hmm. almost, right? Mm -hmm. So, but then I remember in middle school, they would make us, as you talked about, Ken, they would make us, you know, run the mile or whatever. And mm -hmm. I hated it. So, I just, it's the worst. I don't know. It's the worst. Like, I don't know yeah. what happened, but like, I, I mm -hmm. think I just didn't enjoy it. And then somehow, like, somebody diagnosed me with exercise-induced asthma, which I was like, oh, well, then that means I can't run. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So then I was like, oh, shoot. Well, I just – I'm just going to suck, and I'm going to always be one of the last kids <laughs> walking back in while everyone's there, right? So it was always so embarrassing. And then – but here's what's so weird is that I used to be a dancer. So mm. I was like dancing three times a week, but I had this exercise induced asthma that prevented me from running. I could not play sports. It just was, was not my thing. Right. I was, mm. that's kind of how I felt I was labeled. But then when I was in high school, I started running, not with school, but just because I liked it. Because like you're saying, Ken, how mm. weights, you can, you can kind of like tune it out and like focus yeah. on things you want to think about for me, that's running. So like I learned that when I was having a hard day, I would go running after school uh, or just around my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And it has become a thing since then that I've, that I have done my whole life. Like all you need are your shoes and mm -hmm. you can get your exercise and I can clear my head when I'm angry or whatever it is. But it's interesting how when we're kids, Adults try and label you and say, oh, you're not the athlete, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Even though you're a dancer, you're, you're not, you're, you can't do this because you're not built that way or you're not already in sports. So you can't participate. It's just really, I mean, I think that things are a lot better, but, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, that was kind of my, my good and bad of yeah. exercise. And why, why did you want to do it was in, in like you're saying is it entire was it entirely like you you felt good it cleared your mind it helped you deal with your emotions or did you feel pressure like everything you were describing of the it's everywhere in the 80s did you did you feel like it was what you were also supposed to do yeah i think it was both and i and even though i didn't really wear form-fitting 
close because as we've talked about, I was a deadhead slash uh, punk. (laughs) (laughs) But I was very aware of like what was quote unquote in style, which at that time Mm -hmm. I think was like heroin chic, you know, with Kate Moss, Moss, people being so skinny. And I, and so it was like this pressure to be like extra waif thin. And I was thin, but like to be extra skinny. Right. And mm-hmm. so it just was, became this really, um, yeah, tr- it's very troubling, troubling thing while also being positive and, and a thing that mm-hmm. a relationship that I formed with running that I still continue today. Oh, that's great. I mean, it's yeah. great that you were able to find a, a positive thing mm-hmm. um, and to choose it, you know, in defiance of being told you can't do it too, is that's pretty empowering. Mm, right, right. Yeah, I think um, for me, it's interesting how much it, that exercise is tied up with sports, because I guess that's besides just playing as a kid, running around uh, on the playground, pretending, you know, you're a monster, <laughs> a hero or whatever, right. uh, you know, naturally getting getting exercise. So you have all that energy. The first way you encounter it is sports. I believe my very first encounter with sports was uh, in kindergarten. This is even a sport, but we were in the gym and we were supposed to. Uh, take like you know one of those big uh, rubber balls the dodgeball balls Mm. and bounce it off the floor onto the wall and back and catch us and catch it and then oh yeah i I just i i I had not yet uh (laughs) become an obsessive video game player when i was uh you know six years old and i had no hand-eye coordination because i had no reason to because no one had ever taught me but for some reason my hand-eye coordination was worse than every other kid Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. i could not for the life of me bounce a ball to the floor to the wall back to my hands and it kept you know flying everywhere and i think mm-hmm. it was basically like a silent comedian routine ruining everybody else's exercise mm-hmm. uh which would have been fine except whatever was going on in their life the kindergarten teacher got violently angry with me like literally <gasps> violently mm-hmm. grabbed me by the arm and threw me around to the point where she left uh, uh fingernail marks in my arm <gasps> And like, I, you know, my my mom was uh, much feistier when she was younger. And like I came home and we stormed back to the school and there was yelling. And you know, so that was my first like, uh, aren't sports and exercise fun? Oh my <laughs> God. Like, no, they aren't. You Oof. will be physically mm-hmm. wounded, laughed at, and mm-hmm. your mom will be mad. Oh my anyway, God. have fun. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that was not a great beginning for me. Um, and. Yeah, yeah, everything else, uh, yeah, uh, you know, it, it's a fight to get back to something positive. Oh, awful that she did that. I can't, I can't. I mean, I, it does feel like during that time that that <laughs> schools were so much more physical. I mean, I don't know if at your your guys' mm-hmm. school, but they mm-hmm. like the the paddle or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In my elementary school, which is now, it's just like shocking to think that that was allowed. Oh, yeah. I'm so my, sorry that my mom. Yeah, sorry for that, Joseph. My mom witnessed yeah. my principal when I was in second grade, uh, public school, nothing fancy. Uh, uh, pick up a kid at, by the collar and neck, uh, like he's Vader <gasps> choking Captain Antilles, and <sighs> take him outside of school because it was a kid acting up or whatever, you know. But she, I remember her telling me that in shock. It was about eighty two. Um, yeah. Wow. yeah, the good old days ain't all good. <laughs> yeah. No, there's wow. some, some real bad things about the about the good old days. Yeah. So anyway, just the the way you, you were both talking about sports and school and and what you know gets drilled into you. There was that, mm-hmm. um, but then also so sports. I, I tried a couple times and just yeah, it wasn't happening. Uh, you know, I I, I clearly learned hand eye coordination because now it's great from playing video games and painting and things like right, that right, but right. nobody took me aside and drumming. said hold on you're, you're a drummer you got the best <laughs> kind of coordination yeah <laughs> yeah there's a ton of things that yeah. if anybody had just but it, it, jennifer i'm just relating to kind of what you're saying of, of being put into a category mm-hmm. very quickly by adults of like ooh, this one's a, a, a scrawny dreamer who can draw in and stares off into space he mm-hmm. must have he must be physically impaired <laughs> you know mm-hmm. um right. Well, yeah, and then it was. It, it, go, it, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, yeah, so no, you make me think of something good because you touched upon it too. Of just like, without a doubt, sports, athletics, and exercise are going to be intertwined, but they don't necessarily have to. Where I think I still sometimes have this weird, uh, um, lingering effect from that time period of my, of my youth. Of if I am around, you know, nerdy sketch comics or something like that, and one of them's like, I got to go to the gym. I'm kind of like, really. You don't like football. Like, you know, like, like I'm the problem in that situation where it's like, you just kind of, you, cause you're right. We are put into these little boxes 
all along yeah. are, 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 are grown up. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Destructive. He's Fascinating. Yeah. Drilled into us. And then, yeah, mm -hmm. and then there were times, like, by the time I got to high school in particular, there were a couple of exercise things we would do where uh, my very, very rail thin physique benefited me, like, like doing, like, uh, pull-ups. Mm -hmm. um, or running the mile. Like I wasn't first, but I was way better than some of the jocks because I just didn't have anywhere near as much to haul. I didn't have all that <laughs> uh, muscle, some of which was not natural for them even in high school. Um, and so that was weird. I was really good at badminton because mm. oh, it was wow. just mm. running around and it had, noth it had nothing to do with strength. It was mm. about, you know, moving fast um, to get to the right place. Um, but anyway, the first time I, I, made the active choice to exercise myself was between eighth and in ninth grade. Um, it had been drilled into me so much that my identity was you are scrawny. Uh, mm -hmm. Also in kindergarten, a different teacher tried to give me extra chocolate cake every day uh, <gasps> because I was too thin. Um, right. Right. Oh my I mean, God. That, that's why I, why I identified so much with uh, the, the scrawny guy getting his hand mm -hmm. uh, kicked into him. It's one of the reasons that, that um, my love of Sinatra exploded because Sinatra mm. was famous for being thin. Mm -hmm. Endless jokes in the press about, you know, how could this guy, this skinny guy be so attractive to women? <laughs> and I was, it was still my identity, you know, when, when I was a younger person. It was for a very, very long time. Uh, so anyway, uh, between eighth and ninth grade, eighth grade had gone well for me, um, like socially. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, I, I think I'd come into my own with having a sense of humor and, you know, saying weird things and getting attention. And I like, it was literal, like my mind and personality are good, but my body's going to sink me. So mm -hmm. <laughs> my dad had put together, he must've done it for, for his drum playing, just this sad um, ramshackle weight of, it was some like iron rod. He must've stolen from a construction site <laughs> with duct tape on the, on parts of it to put your hands on into, I don't know, oh, wow. uh, 10 pound weights on either side and it barely worked. Um, but I didn't even ask him. I just went down in the basement and listened to Guns N' Roses and, and pumped <laughs> a tiny amount of iron <laughs> all summer. And, and the thing that haunts me is mm. I was in great shape uh, uh, mm -hmm. then and I didn't feel it at all because I expected to turn into Superman. Mm. Um, yeah, and I thought that's right. the only way to be attractive is to be bulging with muscle, and I'm not yeah. doing it enough. And like again, nobody pulled me aside and said, outside of a personal trainer and going to the gym six hours a day, your body's not going to look at like that. You mm -hmm. are extremely wiry. You're extremely strong. You're in great shape. Mm. I and I didn't know it, and I wish I had enjoyed it when it was true. I, I yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you stick this syringe right here, you ain't you ain't breaking this frame. <laughs> you know? yeah. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that was the beginning of my journey. Um, Ken, let's go back to you. What was your what was your lowest point of not getting enough exercise or, or the, the kind of exercise that, that you wanted for yourself? Yeah. You remember uh, rest in peace. He's the king of rock and roll. But remember some of those shots from Elvis later in his life where you're like, whoa, oh, I see it. It's not just the size. It's the sweating. Uh, that was any comedy clip of me from 2003 and four. Um, I was, uh, at a very depressive low point. I had, uh, switched to working graveyards in the early two thousands, um, like in 99, 2000, early 2001. And that kind of took me out of routines, uh, made me very depressed. I used to go, uh, on my, uh, lunch breaks, the old uh, security job when I was working graveyards, me and my friend would go to Jack in the box and at the dollar menu, and this is a pure dollar me me menu back in the day, 10 items each. And, you know, we're talking jumbo jacks and salads and egg rolls and tacos. And that was my like meal every night. So, yeah. um, again, it's not just the number. Um, there's a delicate balance between, hey, you know, be comfortable with who you are. And also, what are you putting into your heart? <laughs> like <laughs> you're just jamming the cholesterol straight in there. And it, the, res the result was I just it, it's it's beyond just not looking good. I just think I set myself back a while and I was really depressed and I couldn't, you know, I couldn't, uh, it's hard. It's, it, it's, it's the circle, right? Mm -hmm. Exercise isn't this elixir that's going to fix everything. Uh, but I do think it's a positive step in some directions and I, you just, but you can't get in there. Uh, you can't pick up the weights or you can't go for even a walk because you're like, what's the point? 
and and I can't get out. And also, I didn't have money to go to a gym. I didn't have money to eat healthy. That's a whole other issue um, that we all have to be aware of and maybe face too uh, as a society. Uh, so it is a vicious circle, and that was that was the point. And I eventually had to get out of that. Again, a lot of a lot of other things going on. Um, mm. Yeah, but I've looked at those clips sometimes, and it's just uh, you know I'm making jokes to soften the blow. <laughs> it's just was like, <laughs> I look at it, I'm like, oh, how do we? Like yeah, it? you know. Mm. You make a, a really good point that obviously so much of uh, the culture's discussion about exercise is about personal motivation, uh, but time and money, every, everything yes. in the world mm -hmm. is time and money. And, and we're talking about like superstars who go from I'm on a sitcom where I'm a, a, a funny, flubbier, scrawny guy, and now I'm, now I'm a ripped superhero. Um, that's like one extreme, but the other extreme is just like being – generally middle class or upper middle class where like yeah. you feel like I can take three hours uh, three times a week. You have mm -hmm. that time. Uh, you have that money mm -hmm. for that membership. That makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that's why I get frustrated when people are like, I saw some, some meme that was like, you know, it's, it's possible to wake up early to find time to exercise. And I was like, I, I don't want to be waking up at five in the morning. I mean, I'd love to be that person. And there are some people who really enjoy doing that, mm -hmm. but it's like, then that means that I have to change my nighttime, which is my time to be able to like unwind and, or play video games or whatever it is, right. Edit videos. <laughs> um, and it's just like, it's just not really fair to make it seem like, well, you have no excuse. It's like, well, yeah, if I don't want to sleep, I suppose I could work out. Yeah, there's that like meme of what's stopping you from looking like this. And, you know, yes. sometimes people mean it seriously and sometimes it's joking like, well, would you like the list? Exactly. <laughs> Money, time, mental health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bad memories. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's easy to highlight that stuff, too. Uh, you know, I um, over in the, on the wrestling side, there's, there's a guy, Triple H, Paul, Paul Levesque. Um, you know, he's married to Steph Stephanie McMahon. A lot of people know who I'm talking about. And they highlight, you know, their, their, their parents to three daughters. They're running. Well, Stephanie's left, but they're running the Fed. Uh, Triple H was a wrestler, active into his, like, late 40s, early 50s. And they, they, they do these pieces where they're like, and after all that, at midnight, they go down to the gym. And they do do that. Um, but you're not, you're not seeing the nights where he doesn't want to be there or the nights he doesn't go or, you know, the massive mm. moral problem we recently had it. And, and, you know, and it's so easy. It's so easy, uh, to, to follow the rock on Instagram and be like, uh, you're right. I have no excuse. It's not excuses. It's just life. You know, the, you know, I, that's yes. my, the motivation world. Um, I, I agree with a lot of it, but I just also think it's. It's bumper sticker BS of just mm -hmm. after it's you're on your own journey. And and I didn't work out yesterday. You know why? My ankle hurts. So it's like, <laughs> but I beat myself up for a couple hours. Right. Um, I got it. I got to do it today. I got to do it today. And and, and that's mm -hmm. just not reality. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it seems to me so much about how does it fit into your life in, in a good way. But Jennifer, I am curious for you about what was your lowest point, uh, not by society's judgment, but for your own judgment of wanting exercise and, and maybe not getting what you want. Oh, it was after I had my second daughter and mm. she, and I, you know, the first few months I was like, Oh, I'm just too tired. Like I'll get, I'll get back into it when she gets a little bit older. And then six months we went into lockdown. Mm. And so, you know, here I had the six month old and a four year old and I, we weren't leaving the house and I had really, I had no time to work out. Mm -hmm. And maybe I could have found, found time, but that was when my daughter was not sleeping through the night at all. It, I just mentally, I couldn't do it physically. I couldn't do it. And so then what happens is, is it's, you know, I, I like food for, for comfort as well. And so then, you know, here's two years of me not working out, eating terribly, but it's, it's one of those things where it's like, if I had been exercising, I probably would have eaten better. But because mm -hmm. I wasn't exercising, I was like, well, F it. I'm going to have ice cream tonight. <laughs> I'm going to have, you know, five guys delivered, like whatever it is. And I just, and so then it just, I went down this spiral where I had no energy. I felt crappy because I was eating crappy because I wasn't moving. Oh, it was horrible. It was awful. Mm -hmm. And I really, I didn't feel like myself. And that's when mm -hmm. I knew I was like, oh, that's why I need exercise, not to get fit and ripped, but for mm -hmm. my mental health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What, what was the turning point for you where you had that realization for yourself? Um, I think when I, 
Honestly, when I stopped, I couldn't fit in my clothes. I started Mm. becoming like ashamed of my body. And just, and that was when I was like, oh, this is, this is um, bigger than I, than I thought. And I just had no energy. And Mm -hmm. I was like, why am I sad? Why do I have no energy? Oh, this is why, because I'm not taking that time for myself and moving like as humans we need to move we used to be hunter gatherers right so mm-hmm. <laughs> i i need that in whatever way it was whether it was walking around the block or or doing a, mm-hmm. a video workout mm. yeah. yeah and then and then did that did it make you feel a, a little bit better as you got back into exercising oh yeah once my daughter went into into preschool i was like yes got my life back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. And it's one of those things where, and this is what I, I think is really important to, to tell kids um, when they're forming their relationship with exercise is just like most people are not naturally gifted at something, right? You have to work hard at it. Mm-hmm. And so I wish that somebody had told me that because it was like, oh, you're just not good at sports. Well, no, it's because I had never tried. Like, <laughs> you know, all the other kids were were trying at home or or through recreational things. I had never tried. It was like, oh, you're just the dance kid or you're just the musical theater kid. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can do anything through hard work. And as hard as it is, exercising a few times a week, by the end of the week, I'm like, I feel a little bit stronger. And so that's what I try and remind myself when I get out of that rhythm. It's like, okay, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt, but then it will start mm-hmm. to get easier and feel better. Mm. That That's a very inspiring and makes a lot of sense. And I think a, a, a similar to, to the journey that I had with my lowest point, mm. um, I think part of it was it, it was a, an incredibly slow decline for me. We were talking about how exercise just fits into your life naturally. And sometimes that's, that's the best way when it's a, a, a rhythm mm-hmm. that makes sense to you. Mm-hmm. And I, I had times on and off throughout my life where I'm like, okay, I, I, I'm going to uh, lift weights for a little while or do push-ups every morning. I've had those on and off throughout my entire life. Mm-hmm. But for a long time, throughout most of my, my 20s and 30s, uh, I, I, had, I had theater and, and mm. sketch comedy. And, it was, and so much of it was physical um, mm. and multiple day jobs. So like, you know, in, in my early 30s or even my metabolism started to change a little bit and I started to, you know, not necessarily just be able to eat whatever I wanted with absolutely no penalty or change to my body. Um, I had multiple day jobs that I would often take the bus to. And the day jobs were on my feet performing or being a tour guide. And then I would have a sketch comedy show at midnight where we literally ran around for 90 minutes um, doing, doing pratfalls and improv scenes where you're building a human pyramid suddenly. And then I would get up early in the morning and, and go do children's theater uh, uh, sometimes musicals where we'd like sing and dance for two hours in the morning. And just, I, I was kind of aware. I would joke that, it, that comedy is my exercise. Mm. Um, but then when I started to work from home more and do, you know, stand up more and podcasts more, yeah. uh, really got on this, this downhill stagnation that got to its absolute worst during during the pandemic and i'm sure there are many experts who can talk about it uh you know yeah. with, with great expertise but the loss of pedestrian day-to-day movement like, yes at its best when i was doing a lot of theater and comedy i had that was my pedestrian movement was to be constantly on my feet um but for all of us just the mm-hmm. the grocery store you know the transit back and forth to work the loss of the day-to-day movement was just huge and, and a huge part of my journey right now is during the pandemic, I, I grew uh, the beard and I'm at a place in my age where my body's probably going to change because of my age, mm. but also it's maybe going to change because of my, my health. And I had the beard. So I kind of knew that eh, I'm not getting enough exercise like all of us. Um, <laughs> but I didn't realize that the shape of my face changed. Um, mm. until I shaved and tried to take a selfie. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm laughing because that's a, that's a, that's a pain. That's a specific kind of pain. It's a specific kind of pain. I'm sure lots of people can relate to it in the part of it that, that is, this is one of those like, uh, comedy helps me cope with something that's difficult. Mm-hmm. The place I, I realized, um, in 2021 vaccines were out and, and, you know, we're getting out there and, and it's feeling like great. And, uh, Sarah and I went to, uh, Sequoia national park 
And I was like, I'm, I'm going to take a, a selfie with this, you know, l- literally one of the largest trees in, in the world. Mm. Um, and I just like, I was like, what, what's wrong with me? I used to be good at selfies and I just can't get the right angle. And then I realized like, eh, it's not the angle of the lighting. It's your face has changed. <laughs> mm. And I was like really depressed, but I had that, like, I'm at this special place seeing this beautiful thing. I don't want to be focused on this. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try to let it go. And I go and I look at this, you know, information plaque about the sequoia. And the title text of the information plaque is, why so big and so old? (laughs) Oh, (laughs) (laughs) Like, damn it, plaque. I was trying to let it go. (laughs) Right there. Uh, That's, 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 that's awesome. Yeah, (laughs) that that was a low point. Ken, you, uh, (laughs) did did you have a, a similar moment of feeling like the actual shape of your face has changed? Um, it's hard to tell because I have, I have the, uh, you know, my beard showed up the moment I got out of um, security where I couldn't have facial hair for 17 years. Mm. Uh, and so, uh, you, you know, um, give or take a couple of years where I was in a suit. But um, yeah, so I, I but every once in a while, you, you got to, you know, uh, beard growers know you got to occasionally shave it off or trim it down to a one or a zero to kind of reshape the beard. And when I have to do that, number one. Grace asked me to step out of the house for a week or two till the beard grows back. But um, <laughs> uh, did you kind of go, oh, that's what we got. <laughs> that's what's going on. And, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, you see it. And, and then you look back. It's so funny. You mentioned, you know, w- wishing you you knew you were in good shape when you were whatever, you know, mm-hmm. I, I look back at like Facebook memory posts and I'm like, oh, see, why did I hate myself then? I, I was lighter and uh, my face looked great. <laughs> like what, my cheeks were, uh, you know, had energy. Uh, you know, you don't, <laughs> you don't, you don't think of it. Uh, the, that's my lesson to the, to, to the, to the youths out there. Uh, flaunt what you got right now and have fun right now. And, and also, I'm also looking in the mirror now and I'm not, um, I'm not unhappy either, but it's, it's yeah. It, yeah. I know what you're talking about that. Like, Oh, this is really happening. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and it's and it's always a struggle to have a good relationship with your yourself in in the present. Uh, but mm-hmm. that, that should be so so helpful to go like to look at. And I've had that same thing too. Of like, I'm looking back at photos where I was like, "Oh no, people are going to know how old I am." And like, you look so young. Why did you care? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the, uh, and, and no, go ahead, go, go ahead. ahead. No, 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 please, you. I, the real the real sleeper is the hand. The goddamn hands. And I think I, <laughs> I think I was, I think there was a shot on uh, Adorable Nightmare where I think there was a shot of my hands or something. I don't know. I remember seeing something oh, yeah. on set and I went, my, who is that old guy? <laughs> like, <laughs> look at those hands. So I moisturized like her. I, I shook a, 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 a hand of a, of, a, of, a, of a female comic at the comedy store about two weeks ago. She goes, you have the daintiest, loveliest hands I've ever shook. <laughs> <laughs> you have a routine I'm like every day, every day I'm scrubbing. Um, but anyway, the, the face is one thing. Those hands, you look at those hands and you're like, oh, my grandma. Well, okay. <laughs> my hands are still quite youthful. So I'll, I'll, I'll put out for the hand modeling. Uh Jen, uh, let's go to you uh, for for this one. Uh, what is your current relationship with exercise? Then we 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 went low to our darkest uh, point. Where are you now? What do you do? Why do you do it? What's your goal? My goal is to move. So basically, I mean, when I was in New York, it was amazing, right? Like you're talking about we're walking to the store, walking everywhere. It felt so great. It was mm-hmm. exercise every day without even thinking about it. But now I have to be much more conscious. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's usually like two, if I can aim for two to three times a week, um, whether it's going and running outside or it might be doing, I, I do J- Jillian Michaels workout, mm-hmm. um, that I've had for years. I also did the Tracy Anderson, Anderson method for a while, but mm. the Jillian Michaels thing, it basically is like strength training, uh, cardio and, uh, abs. And there's, she does some things in the video that I'm just like, Oh my this is really not appropriate, but she, you know what I mean? Like, and she, she does, 
I'm not body shaming, but you know, there, there's some things, but I just, I know the workout and I can follow it. So I just kind of tune her out. Yeah, I'll put on music. Um, okay. But yeah, so that's, that's what makes me feel good. And I like doing that. And I went to the doctor and he was like, what are you doing for exercise? You know, your heart rate is great and you, sh- whatever you're doing, keep it up. And hearing that positive feedback made me feel so good. And mm. so I just was like, oh, okay, great. But I think it's also important to remember, like you're, like you were talking about Joseph, when we do ha- do things that are active in our day, I went to the picket line a couple of times last week and I was walking around in the hot sun. That was my exercise. I don't, mm-hmm. and, but naturally I'm like, oh, I didn't work out this week. Well, yes, I did. That's, that was my exercise. And so I'm having to like rewire my brain to think, mm-hmm. oh, any movement is a way to, to stay healthy and stay active. And that's the best thing that we can do for our bodies, right? Whether it's doing a cardio workout or if it's just doing a, a walk or <laughs> whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, I think that's great. And, and that that's where I'm at too. Of I, I've had even the last couple of years, a, um, a, a good like two month stretch where I do push-ups and some jumping jacks and that in, in, in my home for like, oh, I keep it up for every day for two months and then it falls apart. Um, mm-hmm. And what's been working really well for me in the last several months is to just go for a walk every day mm-hmm. because it isn't too much pressure. I enjoy it. I get out of, you know, working from home. You can get so in your head and you just step out the door and feel better. Cause like, Oh yeah. yeah <laughs> Other yeah. humans, you know, right. it is a real, it's a, it's the whole touch grass joke of like, get some perspective, you know, mm-hmm. see a bird and it helps your mood a little bit. Um, <laughs> Put a bird. So just, <laughs> put a bird in front of your face um uh i i had wanted at one point um early when i came to la and was kind of brainstorming all the different things uh, that i could do and, and i think uh you know geek and sundry and and nerdist were, were you know really hot and i was mm. kind of brainstorming like what's a what's like a funny comedy show i could do and i just i never felt like i knew the right people or had the right resources but i wanted to do an exercise show you know for nerdy people who who had some of the life experiences that we've been describing uh, jokingly called let's not die where <laughs> the the point was to separate this isn't about cosmetic this isn't i mean maybe it can be for you if it's what you want to look like but it's not about those social pressures of you're going to be the skinny guy who gets sand kicked in his face and the big guy is going to take your girl or you know all of the mountain of negative uh uh stereotypes that get put onto women in their bodies like to have a show that like it's about health just health Mm -hmm. nothing about Mm -hmm. you have to look this way it's all about health so because i had that brainstorm i I think about the kind of exercise i want to do is let's not die exercise (laughs) um and and to me like walking every day is let's not die exercise of like maybe i'll you know maybe i'll find out the mystery of my my changed face is it age or is it weight it's a fun mystery (laughs) (laughs) but i'm walking every day because i just i want to stay uh up and able to do fun things. Yeah, that's that's a mm-hmm. it'd still be a great series in some form. Uh, I, I love that. Uh, There's actually. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. A quick plug for the the heroes. What was it? Heroes Journey Fitness. I don't yes. know if they still. Yeah, you know them. Yeah, yeah. They. Uh, they yeah, have I know all their David Nett. Workout. Yeah, he, he yes, David Nett. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. They're they're. Uh, I don't know if they're still uh, doing it, but it sounded really fun. Yeah, I know. I, know uh, I can't remember which. Uh, I, I think there was a, a rebranding, uh, and I don't remember what. But yeah, it was. It, it, he he uh, he and his partners would develop uh, a nerd themed. So you know, you could take a like, I'm being a hobbit. <laughs> Right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did, yeah. did they just own the straight up? I think it was one point called like Nerd Gym or something like that. Was that? Did that I think so. Right? Yeah, yeah. I don't remember the current branding, but I yeah. think it's right. Heroes Journey LA dot com. There we go. Uh, yeah, yeah, Christy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's great. How about you, Ken? Where are you at? I, I know. I feel like the entire time I've known you, you've been pretty good about staying yeah. on your 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 weightlifting routine that works for you. Yeah, I. I I, yeah, I'm a little bit lazy these days, but I always work out. So sometimes it's those like, well, we, we did 30 minutes. We're good. Um, but, um, but that's also the point. We're in a, I think we're in a golden age of, of home and self fitness. If, if, if you want to take it and and there's a lot of good perspectives, there's always going to be destructive perspectives and, and things we put in our own heads, things society puts in our own head. Then there's some good discussion to have on it. And, and I love, uh, you know, I, I never went to that gym you're all talking about, but I remember like Brian Bradley went there. My mm-hmm. brother Smith was there and it was a good, 
it was it was addressing some of the things that that um, your your show will once you get it going, Joseph. <laughs> uh, going back to the youth of, of 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 you can only be one or the other, right? Like if if you're sitting at a computer working and you're great at video games or writing poems and you can't be in the gym, that's a lie, and it's a lie that someone's either told you or we've internalized. And 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 I love kind of I'm okay with parting it out a little bit. Like you want to go to a nerd gym because you feel a little safer, a little calm. You're around people who are on the same journey with you. I think that's a great thing. I don't go to gyms. I've never, I've, I've been to three gyms in my life. I can't stand it. Uh, I don't like the atmosphere. I don't like people watching. I don't like the unwritten rules. I don't like the money. <laughs> so I have always stressed uh, home working out or for a long time was blessed with a, a, a friend um, uh, who had a full, full, Jim is home and he's a friend that, that uh, owned the pro, pro wrestling company that I work for. So I was blessed with that, but I, 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 I will have to admit to that, but um, I'm in a good spot where, where uh, any, any action is action. And, and yeah. I think that once you get that in the walk, first of all, walks are very, very healthy. Um, I don't care if you're, if you're curling five pounds, this is my thing. My friend taught me that you don't, it doesn't need to be 50 pounds. First of all, that would break you too. Like any action is action. Start there, stay there. Doesn't matter. You're you're, you're moving, and and I, I'm in that spot. And and uh, one of the things I, I would recommend. And I sound like a bad motivational speaker um, on Instagram alone. And and I I will I will warn you. It will change your search history. So be careful. <laughs> uh, there's there's a lot of wonderful people um, who are who have, you know, five exercises you can do with a band or no weightlifting, this and that. There's one that I stumbled on. Some people might know her, her handle is built by Becky. She's a Canadian mother of two. And at 36, she decided that enough's enough. And uh, she's in great shape. Um, so uh, I stumbled on, it popped up, I watched it. And I, I like watching her and those types because they aren't the douchey big gym bros who are a very real thing and problem. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, yes. And I don't need to feel like, oh, God, uh, yo, this guy's flipping 45 pound weights on his hand. And what a stud. That's not <laughs> for me. I don't need that because I need I need I need something that works for me right here, right now. And one of the one of the things and you mentioned it, uh, Joseph, like for two months, every day you wake up 25 push ups and that's that. And this is going to be me the rest of my life. That's not mm. ever going to be the case. And I, I, I talk about I'm in certain seasons. There's like the height. There was a last mm. summer I hiked almost every day and I'm going to get back to it. The rain's going to wash away and brought, got me out of the habit right now. I've been, I've been in a go for a long walk phase or just do cardio. I have, I have to be, I have a pro wrestling injury and I have to be careful with my back when it tells me not to lift. I can't lift. Uh, but there's other times that I'm following these Instagram uh, workouts. And I, I, about a year ago, I was in some of the best shape I'd been in a long time. And then that kind of faded away. And then it's easy to beat yourself up. I sound like I sound like a Peloton instructor, don't I? It's mm. easy to beat. You're like I was doing 25 push-ups a day every morning before my first cup of coffee. Well, now you're not. What are you doing now? And what do something different? And your body will reward you with the change up, anyways. Mm. Uh, and that's okay. And that once I kind of got into that phase, um, I have a full gym. Mostly, a, I call it a full enough gym in my in, in my my garage. Um, Grace brought a, a treadmill to the relationship. I brought Ooh. weights and everything. Um, that's great. That, but I, I make that, that's an effort I have. So I don't have to leave the house, but I love going for walks and I love going out and uh, Burbank has a walking path. Um, so anyway, at, at the risk of sounding like a, a Ted talk here, it's, it's, I'm in a good phase where I don't beat myself up as much. Now I still have some issues. We can get to the negative stuff. I still, there's times I'm looking in the mirror, even last week, grabbing parts of my body that I don't like, uh, getting upset, getting angry. I, I have that issue. And that's still mm -hmm. a problem that comes from a lot of things from youth and you try to separate or work through it as best you can. Um, the gym is in a magic elixir. It does not erase that. It does not erase the, the negative thoughts. Uh, it can help. Um, but so I'm in a good phase. I'm excited. I like it. I like it every day. It's a, it's a half hour to an hour that I, my mind clears and everything flows. Mm. That is great. Well, I, I think that you have been a very successful, inspirational uh, exercise TED Talk coach. Uh, <laughs> the seasons thing and just letting it change. That's yeah. so great because I can get obsessive and just be like exactly that of like, uh, I don't know, I heard about what was it, Jack Lane? I think I heard about him when I was eight and like, okay, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. when I get to a certain age, I'll do 800 push ups every day yeah. and I'll live forever like that guy, um, you know? Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and I want to do that. I want to pick the thing and I do that every day and that's the magical solution forever. So it yeah. is really great to have that, just that simple phrase seasons. 
and mm-hmm. let it change. Because we're beautiful. All, we're all normal. I've been around, you know, been, been, I've been in pro wrestling locker rooms and, and I'm making jokes about things that get put into body, but also that's a locker room full of a lot of people who are dedicated to it, who, oh, mm-hmm. the timer goes off. I've got to eat that uh, a piece Oof. of chicken and the lettuce with no seasoning. And it's, Ugh. I do this six times a day. And, and, and that, cause that's their career. And, and um, there's this obsessive t- side to it, but also, you know, we do things, we podcast eight hours a week, you know, they don't do that. Uh, we all have those things. And so I've been around <laughs> that and it can get intimidating. Um, you know, uh, cause number one, the physiques are great and you know, not everyone in locker room is, but, but uh, not needed. Uh, and it's easy to just get lost in that and think that, like we were talking earlier, like that's the standard. Um, you'll ne- you'll yeah. never be the rock. <laughs> you'll never, mm. no. never, no. never will. And there are people who do not have standard, uh, uh, stereotypical, you know, air quotes, healthy bodies who are in the greatest mm. shape ever. You know, yep. I, I have, you know, known some dancers and some theater people who do not have the stereotypical bodies and they will beat you in a mile. <laughs> mm-hmm. They will beat you in weightlifting and by appearance the, the societal judgment would be no. You know, but the, 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 yeah. the, the health and the strength for yourself is so different than the appearance. Oh yeah, I, there, there were, I've seen you know the guys who walk into the locker room and you're like, yep, that guy, he's got the look and he blows up two minutes of the match. There was this one guy I worked with, there's a, a, a named Terex maybe 5'10", if we're lying, uh, 400, north of 400 pounds. And he, this guy would outrun everyone. He would do a standing <laughs> uh, standing moonsault, which is a backflip. He'd do it on his feet in the middle of the ring. He didn't go on top ropes. He was in better shape than all of them. Yeah, so you're right. Amazing. Wow. What's going on in your Amazing. brain? And with that great image, uh, we are going to body slam into a recommendation and take a break. Uh, who wants to do the audible recommendation today? Hmm. I, I have one ready to go, Jen. Ooh. Go for it. Okay. Yeah, go for it. I want to recommend the Christopher Moore book, Lamb, the Gospel According to Biff, Christ's Childhood Pal. Really funny satire, deep philosophical stuff. Highly recommended. This one's narrated by Fisher Stevens, and it's available on Audible hmm. right here, right now. And you can try it out on us by going to audibletrial.com slash force center. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash force center. All right, we got a recommendation. We're going to take a quick break and talk a little bit more about exercise back in a moment. Welcome back to Other Center here. Are you feeling motivated? Do you want to get up in the morning to do some push-ups? You've come to the right podcast. <laughs> or do you just want to kind of, uh, you know, find something that works for you and feel good? Hey, we're talking exercise here in Other Center. Joseph, we got a few more questions. That is right. We've been talking some big stuff, some deep stuff. Maybe that will come in as well. But I also wanted to ask just some, some uh, more possibly fun, specific questions. So, Jennifer, I'm curious... Uh, I think you already answered uh, part of this question of what your favorite form of exercise is, but I'm curious about what your favorite form of exercise is. And also, if money and time are no option and you <sighs> could facilitate any form of exercise, is there something different you would do? Oh, my gosh. You know, the problem is I follow a lot of fame, not a lot, but I follow some famous actors or, you know, influencers who have a lot of money. So I see their amazing gym setups Mm -hmm. in their home. And not to say that that would make it easier, but I, I would love to have some equipment like that, or I'd love to have a treadmill. I think it would also really help because sometimes I'm like, it's too hot to go running. I'm not going to yeah, run today. Yeah. Right. But, um, so that'd be the first thing. If money was no object, I would love to have a trainer come and just, you know, come on, push it. And also help me, uh, target the areas that I want to target in a safe mm. way. Cause sometimes it's just so overwhelming and I'm like, Oh, I think that this is what I need to do. And I was like, Oh, the next day I, that really hurt my back. I should have not done that. Right. Mm-hmm. Having a coach coach you through those things would be great. And then the last thing would be, be to be able to do Pilates. I have always wanted to do Pilates. Mm-hmm. It's very expensive. I want to do it with like the reformer and that type of equipment. So mm-hmm. Oh man, <laughs> that's so that's so frightening. That sounds absolutely like a comic book villain. But. <laughs> it looks like it. It looks intense. Yeah. It's like torture machine, it's, right? Uh, it's Grace's preferred form of exercise. Uh, <gasps> and that. So she goes to a place in Burbank. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I, I. She's like, you ever want to go with me? I was like, do, do you want an ambulance outside waiting for me? Yeah. <laughs> 
it the looks reformer. amazing. It looks amazing. What and the people it? who do it have amazing bodies. Um, it's I don't even know how Ken, how would you describe it? The like this machine. I, it, 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 someone looked at like a medieval torture device and went that. Yeah, that. that. It's kind Move of your like high. Yeah, it's like yeah, high movement, high impact. And it, you're on a machine, you're stretching, you're balancing. It's body weight type of thing. I, I someone out there in the audience is probably screaming. Uh, that's not what it is. I, I should just bring her in here to describe it. I can't. And it, and what's funny is her studio is next to my barber. So oh. often we're at the same spot and I just hear, I'll hear these Titans in the other room and I'm just getting this haircut by an old man. And it's just, it's the a tale of our two lives. Uh, it's <laughs> impressive. And, and you the, the, yeah, yeah. And some people do have uh, 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 another gen I know has, as a home Pilates thingy. Wow. <laughs> and it takes a lot of space. So it's a privilege, but yeah, oh. it's, it's impressive. It's so, impressive. Yeah. So Jen, if you had if you had access to all that, if you had a uh, you know a big house with a reformer in it, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then you, I'd have no excuses. <laughs> yeah, do, well, you had said earlier that running is probably your, your favorite form of exercise. Now, do you think you would? Do you think the reformer would reform you, or do you think you would gravitate back to the the simple thing that you can control running? Uh, yeah, I think that I think I'd like to do both because as. I have to be careful with running as I get older. I definitely feel mm -hmm. it more in my back and my my hips and even my knees, which is just mm -hmm. like, what? Mm -hmm. This is now a thing I have to deal with. Uh, so I have to be careful about how long I run and how often. If it's like once a week, it's all right. So, um, and I also like the idea, people talk about like how they're on the treadmill watching show episodes of shows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That sounds really enticing. I would like to do that. Um, <laughs> you get yourself an iPad and ear pods and that's how I watch most of my shows now, yeah. Oh, I love that. I think that I, I could kill two birds with one stone, one treadmill. <laughs> uh, bird murder, the best exercise. Sure. <laughs> uh, Ken, do you think that you would always just go back to weightlifting? Do you have your your ideal right now of weights? Yeah, yeah I do. I, a garage I, where nobody can bug you. No one can bug. I keep the door closed. Uh, the music's on. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I got we got the treadmill. So usually I start twenty to thirty minutes of you know I'm doing a Rebels rewatch again. That's you know that's on right now. That, that kind of thing. Um, mm. But then I go. Yeah, I got. Uh, but I don't have a lot of ton, a ton of room. So I have a lot of. I'm a big fan of, of exercise bands and stuff like that. Those work for me. There's something I own called a Gorilla Bow, which is really just a, a, a lightweight metal bar with bands on it. It's didn't, but it's just, you're able to do a lot of things, but I have, I have free weights and I have uh, like a both, not a bow flex, but whatever the, the, the home gym kind of thing is. Um, so I like that, but really honestly, my favorite form of exercise is walking. If I could, mm -hmm. if that's the one thing I could make myself do every day, um, it, it's that because I, I, I've always, no matter where I've lived in LA, I've, I've found, uh, you know, uh, areas to walk locally near me and just be, I, I'm that guy. You look out your window, it's five o'clock. There's that guy. There's that guy with the headphones and, and the, you know, looks like he's a podcaster, but he's walking. That's me. And, and, Cause it's just, it's, 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 uh, you get, you get back and you just feel, you know, your knees don't hurt as much. Um, but you, you just feel like you've, you've, you've gotten some of the air out there that you need. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I think I think walking is always going to be one of my favorites. And there's that that uh, partial truth uh, about Los Angeles that hey, it's a car city. Nobody walks. And like, yeah, yeah I, I, I can't walk to Ken's. I have to cross a freeway in a mountain. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, but it, it, L.A. is so many small neighborhoods. And, you know, coming from the Midwest, like, hey, it, it's it can be hard to walk every day because in in Minneapolis, it gets swelteringly hot and you know uh dangerous cold and then you have brief windows uh of of exercise but for me to be able to walk almost every day in most days it's gorgeous in my little neighborhood uh, so many of us have a benefit of la is actually if you're staying in your general neighborhood is a great city to walk in in my opinion yeah, yeah. It, it's not a walkable city in terms of like you're describing living and and that's one of our problems out here, um, the car culture took over, but uh, you're absolutely right. And I, your neighborhood, I know pretty well. It's good walking. Mm -hmm. Good walk. It's fun. Yeah, super good. lucky. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And I can walk up into the hills. And if I want, I can just, you know, you know, walk up to walk up three flights of giant stairs and in 15 minutes get uh, pretty, uh, pretty exhausted. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. it, 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 my it, it, my favorite form of exercise is just b 
being active, doing something creative where you don't recognize it. Um, right. You know, it, 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 you can't sustain it always, but like the, the two intense days of shooting the short film that I keep talking about were great. I don't think I maybe sat down for five minutes. Like, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You never, I mean, I was, you ate your pizza standing up. I did. I tried to sit down and I was like, I know I can't, uh, but I, I love it. Cause you're not, it's not thinking about exercising. You're doing stuff. You're making stuff. You're, 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 you know, p pushing your, your body because you want to get the shot and within, you know, reason and being safe and all that. Um, but that, that's my first choice. The other thing I love is I absolutely love swimming. Um, mm. and, and I think, um, it's funny talking about the differences between being labeled sort of a, a sports person or a, a soft little theater person. I have a musical theater injury. I got to be careful of <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, there you go. my knees are banged up from, from all of the, uh, the Pratt falls. Mm. So I really relate to you, Jennifer, like I can't, I couldn't run. That would be harmful to me. And I don't have people to help me and go, that's a pain you need to push through. That's natural. Right. That's your body telling you to stop. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And, and swimming so great for that because you, you do still have to be careful, but it is, you know, there, there's less, uh, you know, impact to mm -hmm. your, to your joints. Um, and I, I'm lucky to have a swimming pool in the building we've lived in forever, Oh wow! but there's the, and, and it hardly ever gets used. Uh, so I keep having a fantasy of like, well, one of these days I'm just going to be, <laughs> Uh, the guy who's walking around the building in his uh, robe and flip flops because he goes, <laughs> it's it's the eleven a.m. swimming guy again. Mm -hmm. uh, and in my mind, I want to be able to do that, but it's it's that's a that's a big price to pay to right. walk through your entire apartment building in a, in a robe. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I don't. I don't. I don't public swim. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't do that. I don't, I don't public swim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, man, I, that's that's one of my like rich person fantasies. <laughs> oh, a private swimming pool. Oh, wow. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, along those lines, uh, this is one of my favorite questions to to ask you both. Uh, uh, Ken, I want to start with you. What are your favorite lies you've told yourself about exercising? Uh, that working out will fix me, and not working out will destroy me. Mm. so like emotional yeah yeah it's all part of the process uh and, and and there's something to feeling good again we're talking you know and i think it's a very good era to be aware of you know everyone's shape sizes and purposes and levels of happiness um uh you know i, I do think regular regularly working out is part of a healthy balanced life but if you don't want to or don't need to or can't uh, mm -hmm. literally can't that, that, that then then there's other ways to find that stuff so um but that it doesn't it doesn't make you better it doesn't fix you it doesn't make you more powerful i have some folks that maybe think that uh, around me um but also again you know uh skipping a day a week a month a year I sound like a theme song to a tv show uh <laughs> you're not gone and destroyed forever um and, and, you know, my, my mother is uh, in early 70s now, coming to uh, oh, mid 70s. She'll probably, and she's, you know, she's a little, I get some of my melodramatic depression from her. So she always tells me, tells me, oh, my, it's close to being over for me. She teaches five to seven exercise classes a week. Wow. It's, it's in solid, uh, uh, not just shape and that shape sense, but just solid health because of it. And, mm -hmm. and teaches classes to seniors and teaches stretch classes and exercise on chairs because they can't move as much. Um, and I, she has seen people who have hobbled in on, on, on walkers or canes who within six months, a year or longer, it's not a fast process, are on their own two feet and don't even own those things or bring them. You know, she's seen that wow. stuff. It's a real positive impact. So it, it doesn't have to, um, as long as you're blessed with the ability to keep doing it. Again, I understand it's not always going to be the case. Uh, you can exercise for the rest of your life in those particular seasons and, and, and missing a little bit isn't the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that is yeah, that uh, I should have went with you, Ken, last. Uh, yeah, I know. I that, yeah, man. Uh, that, Cause that is the most important truth. But Jen, do you have a favorite lie you've told yourself about exercising? Yeah. That I'm, that I'm not athletic. 
And I think it was because when I was in high school, I was entering freshman year and I wanted to be on the volleyball team for whatever reason. Um, and so I went to the tryout camp and we had to run. We did the, all these exercises that I had never really done all back to back. <laughs> and I threw up in the trash can. Wow. It was like, yes, it was so intense. And I didn't make the team. And I told myself it's because I'm not athletic. And what I learned mm. was that, no, it's just I had never trained like that before. And I was mm. with uh, other girls who had. They had been playing volleyball and working out and doing all that stuff. And uh, like you were saying earlier, Joseph, like I didn't know what was good for my body or what was, oh, this might be dangerous. Uh, I mm. can really hurt myself, right? So mm. I just kind of stopped that. But then I kept dancing and then I realized, oh, I actually am athletic, Um And I'll end it on a positive note, which is my husband was just telling me yesterday, there was a Harvard study that said that the best thing that you can do to live longer is to exercise. Even if you don't have the best diet or or how, no matter your age, exercising, you literally, you will gain years on your life. Mm -hmm. So that was really, and his, his grandmother lived until she was 103 years old, my husband's Mm. grandmother. And it was because she would exercise every week doing her water aerobics in the pool. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because she had a lot of, you know, other issues. She couldn't really walk really, really well, but she could get in that pool and she could exercise. I got to do water aerobics in a public (laughs) apartment pool. (laughs) Watch 20 something hipsters stare at me. (laughs) Uh, There goes old man Scrimshaw. (laughs) I really, I just need to, I need to, I need to approach it like I'm a theater character and like get some weird like cane and weird hat and just be like eccentric weirdo of the building. You need the the old the oldie time swimsuit that goes down to the knees and straps and (laughs) I don't really want that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was was talking about going into the the ocean, which was which was a really great experience uh, Mm -hmm. last week, and I was like, I I really wish I had an old timey one, you know, man's one piece that looks like pajamas, basically. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Uh, the. The favorite lie I've told myself about exercising, and I, I don't think I'm alone, is uh, the Nintendo Wii. Oh, um, yes. That was, like, <laughs> that was huge. Fraud. <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, I, I, you're laughing, Ken, so I'm, I'm sure you had a similar experience. Maybe you did, yeah. too, Jen. But, like, I, you know, I had for a while there, I think, uh, um, and I still do. I'm still friends with everybody, but, but it was at, we talked about this, Ken, when you and I did our video games ranked, some of the power of video games is the community. And I had yeah. this real found family. I did did shows with them. We had specific, we did our bar crawl. We had a specific movie parties we did. And uh, there was a time there where we were really bonded over video games, you know, Super Smash, you know, every night. And the we is, and we would joke of like, you know, all the jokes that, that the three of us have been talking about, of you know, the, we're nerdy. We play video games. We do comedy, you know. Uh, if if this golden day ever came where in order to run around and play Goldeneye, uh, you know, or, or to be Donkey Kong and punch Link, if I had to physically do it, mm-hmm. that would save not just me, but everyone I know in my entire generation. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. all we need. And then the Wii comes out and it's basically that of yeah. get up and swing your whole body to play tennis. And within a week... I rem- we all got together and like, hey, did you figure out uh, you don't need to actually stand up to play uh, Wii Tennis? You can just <laughs> sit on the couch and barely oh. flick your wrist and actually oh. you can move even less than we do when we play Super Smash to play Wii Sports. And this thing I had sworn up and down is a joke, but to myself as well, this is what will save me. This is what will give me the motivation to exercise. Broken it within a week. Mm. It, you know, went from this revolution to get up and move your body to mm-hmm. tiniest wrist movement possible. Oh, wow. It's, and here's the thing, I, I, the, that the, we fit, right. The week comes out and then they, they had the whole, like you, you get the pad and there's like maybe a yoga pad. But this is a, oh, yeah. my, uh, a girlfriend at the time, um, Christina, I, uh, um, she was a gamer too. And it's like, so she wanted that so for Christmas one year. I, I, I went all out. I swiped some credit cards and got anything that you that came with the Wii Fit. And mm-hmm. I'll tell you this: if if you followed it, it would work. I remember doing mm-hmm. like the ski jump, and it felt like doing squats and the tennis, like you're talking about. But you're right, and it also 
you don't pull that out to set it up every time you play games. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you know? I used to, I used to have a, like a, uh, in my old apartment where I didn't have a lot of room. So I maybe had a, a little bench, a couple, a couple free weights and I had like a exercise bike, a, a compact one. And I had this great idea of, I would play video games while on the bike. And this is great. I can just pedal while I'm going. By the time, 10 minutes into the game, the pedaling is because I'm stopping and I'm concentrating <laughs> on the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've wanted to try the, the, I don't know what it's called. I think it's the, the one through Facebook meta or the Oculus, you know, those like virtual reality things mm-hmm. that you can put on the goggles or whatever. Oh my gosh. It sounds so old. <laughs> and you like, you can exercise <laughs> through the virtual world. Uh, but in real life, if that makes sense, you do the movements. It's the same idea as the Wii, but just to get is. it like, you know, but yeah, I've heard that that's really fun. Uh, but I don't have that equipment. So <laughs> yeah. And I wonder if it just is a, a, a divide in some people's brains, my brain, a little bit what you're describing, Ken, of like, there's, there's not that exercise can't be fun, but like, that's not the point of a video game. And it's mm, yeah, mm-hmm. always going to be a little bit of an awkward marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. We talked about this a, a little bit, but um, Jennifer, what do you think makes exercising easier for you? What is, what is the best thing that helps make it easy to be part of your life getting into a routine li- writing it down in my calendar mm. workout it's holding myself accountable uh it, it's really really important because otherwise i don't want to do it there's a lot of other things i'll be doing right um mm-hmm. and then to get myself all sweaty <laughs> get, <laughs> so like you're saying ken if if i dress in my workout clothes when i go drop off my kids i am absolutely more likely yep. to work out when yep. i come home it's like okay i'm just gonna go right into it mm-hmm. um or if i have like a something that i'm preparing for i i always work out mm-hmm. because i feel like i'm maybe there's some nerves involved so it like helps me clear my head it helps me feel like when i'm pushing through my running i am pushing through my nerves that I have for the event. So it's like, it's a mental thing. Mm. Uh, yeah. To like challenge myself. And then also um, like if, if I can just, my Apple watch will hold me accountable. I like oh, that. Too, yeah. Right. Uh, we'll say, yeah, this is, this is your ring. You got to close your movement. And so then I, then I'm like, okay, well, I guess <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll do some, I'll walk the dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think for me, it's, it's uh, allowing it to be a, priority because i'm always mm. feeling like i don't have enough time and i'm i'm very very guilty of uh I, I have a hard time doing something if it feels like more than one step so it's like mm-hmm. uh, i'd sit here in my sweatpants to record the podcast and i want to walk but i gotta put on pants and put my contacts in and that's <laughs> just that's like a half hour of my life gone and what about this script i want to write and like uh i've been doing better because i am just saying like you gotta let that go uh, it is, you're choosing to make this a time priority. It's not a thing to shove in the side. It's, you know, the second most important thing in your day, like you, that you have to do, you have to walk and mm-hmm. you have to let that be, uh, more important than whatever other thing you're working on. That's like the only way I can trick myself is by like, this isn't something I'm trying to squeeze in. It's the priority. Mm-hmm. Um, because I want to uh, live to 103, <laughs> like water grandma. Um, uh, how about you, Ken? What makes it easier? You're all hitting things that are are, are similar to where I'm at. Where it's like, well, currently I'm 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 blessed enough to 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 you know work at home, and and this is what we're doing, and and other my writing job is at home, so I don't have to get dressed to go out. And and but in the days where I didn't, you know, 17 year day job, I, I was gone and had to come home. If I didn't immediately switch into into the workout gear i I wouldn't do it even if i was going to work out hours later um so knowing that and knowing that you know for me that is a weakness other people that might not be the case we all seem to be sharing the same sentiment so just choosing it sounds like i'm selling sneakers here but the the just do it mentality uh, yeah i i i I, it's a time thing sometimes it's not the physical exertion that scared me off or uh, i don't want to do that today it's like that's an hour including a shower <laughs> like i got i got i got bleep to exactly. do that, right? or you know i kind of just want to have that uh, that pizza that's in there and, and you know and and being okay with those days like i keep talking about but the the old just do it mentality uh it, it definitely is important and, and you're right joseph i, I am uh I, maybe it's something with the creative brain side i don't know if i don't 
you know, I got to film videos for like my, my sports card ASMR channel. If I don't unplug the laptop and move the camera into position that morning, I won't film the videos that night. Mm. <laughs> it's so stupid. Mm -hmm. so stupid. It is. Two minutes. But if I don't, I see it as an extra step that I don't have time for. And that's how it is with working out. Just prepare yeah. for that. Get that done. Yeah. When the one task becomes three in my mind, like, mm -hmm. oh, now it's impossible. I could do one task, but I can't yeah. do three. Yeah. Uh, all right, we are going to wrap up. Uh, I, Ken, you you have given some uh, great coaching. You as well, Jennifer. Um, but I'm curious about your plans for your own exercise future. Ken, Ken, we'll frame this on Ken's great seasons idea. What, <laughs> uh, Jennifer? What do you think is is your next season? What's what's your plan for what's around the corner for you, exercise wise? I would love to be the person that wakes up before my kids to work out. I really, really would because then I really have no excuse. Sometimes what happens is I come back and things will be happening after drop off. And then I get, you know, then it's 11 o'clock. I'm like, well, it's lunchtime. And now I already have my makeup on. I'm not going to mm -hmm. work out. So it's a way for me to like build an, build in a cushion. Right. Mm. So I, I can make sure that I get that workout and I prioritize it. So that's a real goal, but that <laughs> that's lofty. So at this point, just working out maybe twice a week regularly in my routine, this is my carve out my workout time. Mm. Uh, no excuses. Just get it done. Mm. Yeah. That's great. Ken, how about you? What, what is your next season? Do you think? Uh, I'm going to get back to hiking. I actually just text uh, uh, Christian Ruvacamba of the weekend. He was my hiking buddy for, for a lot of times. And, and uh, Steve Ellis from Black Series Rebels actually got, he showed me some of the trails that I hike on. Uh, I just was like, dude, what the F are we doing? We got to get back out hiking. So we're going to find some time because uh, it, it's, uh, it was very, it's, and it's hard. You're halfway up the hill going, why the hell did I do this to myself? <laughs> then you, you get back in the car and you're like, I can't wait to do it tomorrow. So that's that and continuing uh, what I'm doing and just making sure I find the time and continue to not be, beat myself up. If I, if I don't, I, I'll never be, you know, uh, Mark Ellis, God bless him. He's up at 5 a.m. every day. Wow. Jumping and cryotherapy in and doing all oh things. And it's paid off. He, his arms look great on stage. I can confirm. But I, <laughs> that, that ain't me, babe. That ain't me. I'm never going to do that. There's a week or two where I'll get up and be like, oh, I, I worked out. I used to work out before our recording sessions on Monday. But wow. really? I'd sit down, I'd have a workout in there. Oh, There's nothing wow. stopping me from doing that. This morning, I had coffee. I read a little bit of my book that I'm reading. The storm is here. I'll play some baseball while going over notes. So it's that's this season. <laughs> the mm. free workout <laughs> podcast is another season. So, but yeah, that's the media goal. I can walk. That, that is a great season. Uh, yeah, I'm, my, my current season is I, I walk every day. When we're done uh, recording, I will uh, put on pants and I will go walk about uh, three quarters of a mile to a little free library near me oh. and check that. That's my little motivation. Nice. Uh, That's but great. yeah, next season, I, I'm, I want to be who's the guy in the robe and the cane and the weird hat who goes to the swimming pool every day. <laughs> I want to be swimming pool weirdo. It's like a Wes Anderson character. I like it. <laughs> yep. I just got to get into character. That's it. Yeah. Well, yes. You, uh, you, 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 I want you to look like Gene Hackman at the end of Royal Tenenbaum. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking. Oh, that's what it's it. gotta be that's what yes. it's gotta be uh, maybe I'll just have like a, a full like makeup like fake mustache and everything to <laughs> so be like who is we really don't know who that did, did that person live here we don't know, <laughs> don't know. Uh, well this has been a very fun talk and I think uh, uh, healthy to talk about the reality of it uh, I think there's a whole diet side of it that we didn't get into as much because that's a whole other a big can of worms, but um, mm -hmm. I, I think if anything, if you're listening, uh, regardless of what age you are, what health you are, it just uh, I think, no, it's something that uh, we almost all struggle with in different uh, ways. The, uh, the good, the bad, the exercise. Ken, that's it. Take us away. Hey, we are on Twitter. Uh, share your workout videos. I think I that maybe I don't know. Uh, we're on Twitter, Four Center Pod. We are also on uh, Threads at Four Center Pod. We'll we'll get the other spots. We're still on Hive. Go check us out there. Facebook page at Four Center Podcast. Instagram, YouTube. You can find us there. Thanks again to everyone who joined us for the live Q and A on Friday. Podcasts available in a lot of different spots, including iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or more. Just put us in your ears and go for a walk. Merch available at tpublic.com/slash/user/slash/four center. You can 
support us directly. So many already do, and we appreciate it at patreon.com slash force center. Follow me at Ken Abzug or Ken Abzug.com. I think I'll have some dates to announce soon with Mark Ellis. Speaking of uh, that uh, workout scoundrel, uh, you can follow uh, me there to let, uh, let I'll get you, I'll let you know. I'll give you the updates. Uh, Jen, where can they find and follow you? You can find me on TikTok at Jennifer Landa 1138 and all the other social media platforms at Jennifer Landa. I have new content coming. I asked my uh, my audience on uh, Instagram, what do they what do they think? Can I talk about the pink doll stuff? No, I know I'm not going to be it, but I will be talking about like retro things and vintage things and fun things like that. So join Ooh. me there. That's awesome. Love that. Uh, Joseph, where can they find and follow you and take us home? Uh, watching Jennifer's retro vintage videos. That sounds great. Um, yeah, you can find me on all the social media at Joseph Scrimshaw. I particularly want to uh, put forward Blue Sky. I've been enjoying being on Blue Sky, but it, it still feels a little empty with um, their invite code and uh, mm. stuff. I don't know if those are going out more, but if you're on Blue Sky, uh, please come find me there as well as all the other social media. And uh, uh, soon I'll be able to, to have some of the specifics but the Nightmare Adorable, uh, the short film that I can't stop talking about, uh, will be playing at the HP Lovecraft Film Festival in Portland, Oregon, October 6th through the 8th. So if you're nearby, uh, watch out for those tickets on sale and details coming soon. That is it. However you choose to do it, I hope you enjoy some exercise. Oh, yeah.